The question of what is an adventure game comes up every so often and has a multitude of answers. A game which gives you a sense of exploration and, well, adventure. A game which doesn't necessarily require combat, precision movement or strategic planning to progress. A game where you need to slide a newspaper under a door and then poke a key out of a keyhole. There's many interpretations. And you might be starting to see why I called the series Point and Quickie instead of I am reviewing adventure now, hello. Today we're looking at what I'd call a borderline example of a point and click, but something I'm happy to put in the adventure category. Bad Dream Coma. Which I'm tempted to call Bad Dream Colon Coma, but I know I'd just screw it up and say Colon Coma instead, so we'll stick with the free word version. It's by Desert Fox and published by Playway SA and or Ultimate Games SA. Not sure how I'm meant to read this. You can grab it on Steam or GOG for Windows and Mac OS X, and I'm running out of ideas of how to segue into the story section, so here goes. The game begins with you safe in bed, drifting off to sleep and finding yourself in a strange dream world. A dream world which looks to be falling apart at the seams. A dream world from which nobody can wake up. It's strange enough already, but how strange that dream world becomes is pretty much up to you. See, certain actions you take will result in you getting a status effect, which you can see by clicking status or pressing the S key. This screen also tells you what endings it's possible for you to get, based on what you've done so far, and also tells you which statuses affect which endings, positively or negatively. It's quite possible to get everything except the bad ending scrawled out before finishing the first of the eight chapters. I couldn't quite figure out if good actions can cancel out bad actions, but I don't know why statuses would have positive effects otherwise. These statuses can even affect gameplay. I won't go into why for the sake of spoilers, and simply say that it makes those statuses feel more tangible, more than a mere checklist. An active link between what you did and what's happening now. Not only that, but the actions you take will determine how the world looks in the following chapters. If you go full bastard, you can expect a pretty macabre environment before too long. In fact, there's some pretty horrific sights to see regardless of what you do, but that doesn't mean you cannot make this place worse. You yourself can be the judge as to whether that will put you off or not. What I will say is that the dark content and gore is mostly fantastical, leaning towards classic uh, horror. We're not venturing into silent to realness here. That said, the music and sound design seem to have two things on their mind at all times. Dream and oh heck. They convey it very well, it's enough to make any scene seem intimidating, even the more mundane ones. And this might be one of the few times where a lack of voice acting actually works as a positive. I think it fits the aesthetic and art style and pushes everything just that little bit more off kilter. The reason I opened with that whole what are adventure game monologue is because Bad Dream Coma plays more like an escape the room game than a traditional pointy click. Wandering around areas in a first person view, collecting inventory, having the occasional non-interactive conversation, that sort of business. Despite having a keyboard shortcut for the status screen and the ability to hide the interface with the right mouse button, this counts as one button for me. Unlike almost every other game with that interface however, this one decided to only let you have one object active at one time, old school Sierra style. Whilst that quashes my usual gripe about clicking and dragging items to use them, it replaces that with more clicking. Click object, try to use, click the next one. At least it doesn't make you wait for a that doesn't work message. The cursor straight up tells you when an item isn't going to do anything. And you can still get the names of your inventory items by hovering over them. Doesn't do that for hotspots in the world, but yeah, can't have everything I suppose. Speaking of, the one buttonish interface makes hotspot interaction context sensitive. You might get to look, take, use, use with an item, or fist. You can imagine which ending that action pushes you towards. In particular, the game will tell you which hotspots you're meant to use an item on. Other times I may have railed against this for telegraphing a puzzle solution. Not today, and this is for why. The puzzle design here is what you might call abstract. Having the game take place in a dream allows for some pretty odd things to not only happen, but make some modicum of sense. I wouldn't call it moon logic, but be prepared to shift your usual thinking over to the left a bit. It makes sense in context, as they say. I mean, how else can you explain being blocked by this gate instead of just 
ducking under it. What I might have called moon logic anywhere else becomes normal and almost charming here, because it fits that dreamlike atmosphere. Once you're used to that change, it's quite captivating. The fact that there's multiple endings also means that there may be more than one puzzle solution available. At least, at first. Now, I only tried for Super Jesus and Turbo Bastard runs, but I ended up on a pretty linear path quite quickly. You start off doing evil things, you only get evil options later down the line. Maybe a more neutral playthrough would have provided more leeway, I don't know. What I did get were two notably different experiences. I think there's maybe one unique location for each ending you can try for, but the way you experience those locations is itself unique. More so than one of them being a den of horror, although that's the most obvious difference, and a pretty smart way of reusing your existing environments by tying them back into the player's actions. Characters will react differently, they may have different roles in the story, and some may not show up at all. And personally, I can't wait to see that one user review where somebody acted like a total prick the entire game and was then surprised that all the NPCs acted like a prick right back. For the record, it was the evil ending I got first, and that took me just over three hours. The second good playthrough took just over one and a half hours, which I mostly put down to knowing what I was doing this time around. The good and evil routes have their unique events and puzzles, sure, but I may have oversold it earlier. Some of the differences are basically a different shade of paint. All that said, I was reloading autosaves whenever I wasn't sure I'd made the right decision for the ending I'd wanted. You can easily do the wrong thing if you're not paying too much attention, which is a fine time to mention that the game offers you multiple profiles while saving automatically to that profile. If you want to save scum, you'll either need to go back to an autosave or restart the chapter entirely. Point is, you won't know what you're doing the first time. Not if you're me, anyway, I had to get used to all of this first. Once you do, though, it all seems to fit. The slightly twisted logic of the puzzles, the minimalist illustrations that serve as the game's graphics, they all bind your brain into this game's own way of thinking. Those strange impulses you get when you're stuck on an adventure game puzzle are that much more likely to work because of dreams. The world reacting to what you do makes you ponder the actions you've taken, you wonder how it could have gone differently and where you could have ended up. The multiple endings that actually allow that reflection to occur and reward a second playthrough. Throw all this together, bear in mind that there's no voice acting and the £5.99 price tag, yeah, seems right. And if you think in any way that you could cope with a game of this style, I'd say this is worth a look. And even if you're not sure, there's a free demo for you to try right there on Steam. Commitment free. Also handy if you want to punch some crows. Hello, thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you feel inclined to leave a comment, a like, a dislike, whatever you fancy, please do. Or if you really like what I'm doing and want to support the channel like these fine folks on screen here, I do have a Patreon. Thanks again and cheerio.